Uh, here's a hoop that's about ready to be shipped out overseas, and uh, I've sold a lot of these. And this is the, a nice case, and this is the, the Zany Blaney levitation hoop. I, I would say the hoop was maybe one of the great single magic props of all time, and, and uh, it's turned levitations into something completely different. Uh, that no longer having to do the double hoop pass. I mean, the only clever double hoop pass I ever saw was Aldo Ricciardi's, which he would make the pass, and then he'd hold it and say, oh, you want to see it one more time in pantomime, and he'd throw it to the other hand and then pass it again, which was pretty clever, but when you see Walters, and it's just this continuous pass with one hand, it's what it's supposed to look like. And, uh, and it overtook the magic world by storm. I, there, no one had ever seen anything like it. And, uh, and I don't think there can be anything ever, ever invented any better. The levitation is spectacular, but the hoop, the hoop you can't say any words for. Every great magician in the world has used it, and there is nothing better, and there will be nothing better than the Blaney hoop. Walter, congratulations, you rock our world. Interesting story about the hoop. Uh, I invented the ladder levitation and got it booked at IBM convention in Des Moines, Iowa in 1965. Uh, this was back around May or something like that. And uh, I said, I've got this new illusion, a new suspension, and I call it the anti-gravity board and I'd like to show it. And I said, sure. So I was ready to go do that. And then I got to thinking, and I asked around the magicians I knew, does anybody know of a trick hoop? that you can use with a magician's levitation. Nope, nobody knew of one, nobody had one, nobody ever saw one. And so I just thought of the possible ways of doing it, and I went to a company called Offenheiser. It's a city square block metal crafting place that builds all kinds of stuff, million dollar contracts with NASA. And so I said, here's what I want, and they tried to figure out an easy way to build it, and they made it, and by luck, I didn't know it then, but by luck, uh, there was one they made that worked. Oh, it got crushed by a refrigerator or something falling out of a boxcar onto it while it was being shipped. And so then I went back to Ovenhauser and they tried to make five more, only one of which worked. And that's the one I still use today. And then I started trying to get them made. The saga of the metal hoop. Uh, I couldn't, I tried to get them made and I would have the tubes bent uh, by one place, $4,500 and they wouldn't guarantee it, and what I got was junk, unusable. Threw it all away. Another time, $3,500. Another time, $4,000. And this went on and on, and it finally got up to $11,000, and 15 years of work, $11,000 back then would be like $30,000 in today's dollars. And all that money was lost, you know, and all that time, and it just was impossible to get done. I got uh, one guy that said uh, in another state towards the West Coast, and he says, I think I can do that. And so I went over all the plans and what was hard, why nobody else could make it and all like that. And so he said, okay. So I go to the uh, 1986 convention uh, of IBM in Long Beach. And on my way back, I go way out of my way, uh, 250 miles out of the way to this town and came back 250 miles. That's 500 mile round trip out of the way of coming back home to Houston with all my illusions and everything. And so the guy that owned this big company, a city square block plant, he, he said he could do it, and she said, one thing I can't do, and another thing I can't do, and another thing I can't do. And I said, I hope you're joking. He said, no, I, we don't do those three things. And I said, well, what about all my letters and all our phone calls? That is the project. That's what nobody else can do. And if you can't do that, I'm getting in the car and I'm driving home. And he says, well, I feel bad. I'm sorry. I misled you. I said, well, it's just 500 miles of extra driving. And then I get a phone call several months later, and the fellow says, uh, I'm a friend of so-and-so that couldn't make your hoop. He feels bad about that. But he gave me the plans, which I was hope, hope was okay. But I'll tell you what, I know 
you want it guaranteed, you don't have to pay me a penny. I'll make one. I'll set up the dies. I'll do all the stuff that he said he couldn't do. I think I can do it, and it'll be a challenge. But then if you, if it is what you want, and you can sell them, and that's what you want, then you owe me $400 times 30. You have to buy 30. Well, that's $12,000. That was my life savings back then. This is 1986. And he sent me one. And my two daughters, two of my three daughters, Becky and my daughter Shannon, were there. And I said, girls, uh, this is supposed to be a hoop. I don't have to pay for it if it doesn't work. And if this doesn't work, I'm not going to waste another minute. There will never be a Zany Blaney metal hoop. So I took it out of the box and unwrapped it and picked it up and looked at it. And it started working almost by itself. And I started crying because after 15 years and all this money, here was the perfect hoop. It couldn't be made any more perfect. I still had to make it into the actual working hoop, which takes four or five days of work. But the metal parts were perfect. And my daughters hugged me and said, oh, Daddy, you've taught us that perseverance pays off. You're always saying perseverance pays off. And I was about ready to give up. But just by luck, the final last instant, I got what I wanted. So I got 30 of them, and they all sold for like $1,895 or something. And uh, so then I got uh, another 15 made. And he said, I didn't make any money on the first one. Uh, I have to raise the price to 850 And then the next time, he doubled it to 1700 and then the 2100 And now I pay $2,500. So I bought 22 times 2500 I wrote a check for $55,000. And that's what I go through, not knowing if I'm going to sell them for $3,500. So my 1000 is the risk of my capital, no income on $55,000 for two or three years till they sell off. And uh, maybe they never sell off, I don't know, and everything. But everybody's got one, loves it. And quite a few like Copperfield and Lance and uh, some of the big guys own two, one for a spare. So I'm very proud of this. This is my baby, along with my levitations. Uh, these, are, these are what I do.